So I'm traveling this week and I haven't been able to sleep. And it's made me in some ways completely question and waffle some of my core beliefs on me and work and gender equality, <laughs> the things that I believe so deeply about. So I'll start with why I couldn't sleep. And clearly, as you can hear from my voice, the fact that I couldn't sleep allowed the germs that were just like hanging out in my body to realize, yes, it's time to attack. Let's get her. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I laid awake hours, hours. I maybe got three hours sleep the first night, three hours of sleep last night. And like, there wasn't anything particularly going in my brain. I'm doing something that's like pretty, like has been pretty high intensity for work, but it wasn't, it, I wasn't worried things were done, we were gonna be just fine. I was very confident. It was what I could feel, and I wasn't thinking about the girl specifically, but what I could feel was this like, hmm, hmm, we're not sleeping, we're on alert. It was like my caveman brain being like, you are away from the nest, we feel awkward, and we're just going to like, be on alert for tigers. I, I really believe that if I could let, if I was back in, I don't know when, beginning of human civilization, I would have crushed it at like tiger spotting or something because my anxiety is always, <laughs> always getting the better of me. What's gotten me off or questioning things is that I'm not particularly frontal cortex sad to be away from my kids. How much do I dream of a night alone and to wake up on my own volition and not to somebody else's crying? Like, it's what I wait for. And when I have those nights at home, it's like I'm a different person the next day. And so I'm in a great, you know, a really nice hotel room. We've got, I've got cozy bathrobes that come with a hoodie and fleece on the inside. Like. I should be golden. There's chamomile tea and a smeg teapot to warm up my water. Like we're good, right? But there's so, so like here I'm good, but like something in my like caveman brain, like I was saying, like it's just like, nope, nope, we're not good. We're away from the kids and it just feels weird. There's somebody that I highly respect and admire that I have this debate about and comes from a very well experienced vantage point. His view is that you'll, we'll never get to 50-50. We'll never get to 50-50 equality in the workplace, particularly at the most senior levels, because there'll always be a segment of women who, for natural reasons, want to be with family and prioritize caregiving over their professional pursuits. And there will always be, conversely, more men driving for those positions because they don't feel that natural pull to be close to the nest. Every part of my being wants to say no. Every part of my being wants to say that's not possible. I wasn't raised in this like, no, women can't have it all. We can't see equality at every facet of our society. And that, you know, women should be relegated to this other part of the world or other part of our society, this caregiving world. But it's the last couple of nights that, that make me question that. That is there a time, a place even, a, a segment of a childbearing person's life that they just need to stay closer to the nest. There is something innate that we will always be fighting, that will always be challenging. And what's so interesting is that, and this is like for everything, societal norms evolve. This is one of the reasons why humans are, when you look at us compared to any other mammal, humans are so much more evolved, is because we have this ability to sort of park our natural instincts and evolve ourselves through other means. So let's take our most closest cousin, monkeys and apes and gorillas, bonobos. Um, they can only evolve as fast as the, the slow Darwinian evolution takes them. And we can say, no, 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 I'm gonna park my caveman brain and I'm gonna do all of this 
to make us completely different. And that's cool, and that's been largely fantastic for us as a human species. Maybe there are some things that we just need to be cluing into about our caveman brain that should reflect into how we pursue women at work and people at work, humans at work. Because I wonder if men were given the same kind of consideration would that play out differently? What has sort of further kind of gotten me questioning or realizing that there's, I don't know, something here is I met up with two very dear girlfriends who I met just more, just more than 10 years ago at a conference, an innovation conference. And we were three of the youngest speakers there and we were all in it. We were all really loving and thriving in our professional lives. We didn't have kids. We had significant others, didn't have significant others. And, but like we could be that full professional self and it didn't define us from like an ego or um, perspective, but it defined us from a, this is what we love to do. This is what gives us great energy and meaning and interest and excitement in our days. And we met this week at 8 a.m had breakfast till 10 30 at one person's at one of the women's house and all remarked how all three of us are all working shorter hours more flexible so that we can go to costco in the middle of the day and so that we can be the ones to pick up our kids and make dinner and how we're okay with that and how that really fits what we want today. And because the guys who we were with 10 years ago aren't doing that. They're not taking that four, five, six year pause. And I was talking with someone else who has kids a little later, uh, a little older, and she said it, she had the same thing, couldn't sleep when she would travel when they were younger. It's gone away from her now. And so I don't imagine that this is gonna be a forever thing. And I don't imagine that at some point I will be able to go back to that 30 year old self who really could dive in and throw herself into work. But there is a pause and that pause isn't unnatural. And as much as I want to challenge and evolve my cave and brain, there's something there. And so I don't have a moral from this one. I'm not even multitasking because I'm not home. I don't have anything else to do. But for me, the I think there is a learning in, in almost like seeing the matrix and understanding the, the social professional norms that I feel I need to be living up to and the caveman brain that exists within me. And if you have a better suggestion for caveman brain, please suggest it, because I recognize that maybe not the like best one. I don't know, anyways. Caveman brain living inside me and, and then what's happening internally. And so with that understanding, I kind of get why I didn't sleep and I kind of get why I enjoy being here because I do love working. I am a disgruntled housewife. I cannot not be working. And I think that that helps me A, know that I'm not crazy and like suffering from some random rare case of insomnia while traveling, but also B, how to make decisions and how do I want to move forward? So like maybe I travel less uh, while the girls are still young or Maybe I know this is going to happen and I'm going to be one of those really, really smart apes and go faster than what evolution allows me to and just take melatonin on the first night because I know that something's going to be nagging at me. And I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is for me right now, but that's where I'm at. And well, I thought I would share. <laughs> oh, that's it for me. Keep well.